Based out of Los Angeles, Golden Road Brewery is one of the more recent startups, brewing its beer since 2011. Golden Road Hefeweizen is one of the four year-long staples from the company. However, does the company's take on this German classic prove to be a crisp, refreshing beer? Find out now on Two Dudes Reviews. Golden Road Brewery focuses primarily on IPAs, with half of the year-round staples standing as an IPA variety, as well as most of the seasonal beers pushing the IPA style. The Hefeweizen is a welcome break from this, but is the wheat beer able to hold its own against others in the crowded market? Let's find out. What up guys? Yeah, we have the uh, Golden Road Hefeweizen here. This is, like I said earlier, out of Los Angeles. I uh, haven't had this before, so I figured Let's uh, check it out. And this is one of the few non-IPA beers from uh, the company. Out of the four seasonal or four uh, year-round beers they have, two are IPAs. One's the Hefeweizen and one's uh, Nut Brown. So it's a really um, strong IPA company, or at least that's what they go after. So, all right. Um, now we got this poured. Let's start the review and dig into the smell. It's crisp, that's for sure. It's got uh, le definitely very lemony. You got your wheat beer notes to it. It's it's a uh, lighter, almost close to the uh, pilsner side of it. Yeah, there's almost a little slightly slight earthiness to it as well, almost um like a lemon lemon grass almost maybe. Yeah, it definitely has more of the the, the German Hefeweizen than a, a Belgian wit beer. So it's definitely more along that the German line of it. But it smells good. It smells refreshing. Um, it's like a thousand degrees outside right now, so it smells good to me right now. So I'm gonna re uh, recommend it on the smell. And now let's check out the taste. It is pretty crisp. Um, it does have the uh, more of a lemon zest than an actual lemon uh, flavor. Um, it has it has some of the like a little bit of the like the a nutty um, flavor to it. Not very strong, but there's a little bit of nut in there. You can almost taste maybe some of the nut brown a little bit in this beer. Um, Not bitter at all. There is really no bitterness to it. Um, it definitely just tastes like your your general uh, Hefeweizen. Uh, nothing's really standing out um, to uh, say it's any different from you know a Hefeweizen that you might have someplace else. But it's crisp. It's refreshing. It's um, not overly carbonated. I find that sometimes um, other Hefeweizens are too carbonated, almost, and it gives you just too, too many bubbles going on in here. Um, it does still have a little bit of carbonation on it, but it's not, you know, it's not like flat or anything like that. But um, it has a nice level of carbonation in it. Might be slightly thicker than your average Hefeweizen. Um, it does have a bit, you can taste like the, the barleyness in it. Uh, not overpowering, but it's there. It's it's not, yeah, it's not as thin 
as some of the German Hefeweizens I've had before. Um, that's kind of like the lingering flavor on the back of my mouth is a bit of, of a little bit of barleyness, um, some of like the some nuttiness, and then lemon zest. That's pretty much the flavors that I'm that's coming together. Um, the taste is all right. I'm going to. Uh, Um, I think I, I like it for the most part, so I, I'll recommend it on the, on the taste. Um, all right, next is value for price. Um, I got this for under two dollars, I believe. Uh, might have been one one ninety nine or maybe a little bit over two dollars. I'm not sure. Um, I've never seen this before coming from the Midwest. Um, I don't don't get a whole lot of beers out of Los Angeles uh, outside of your major. Um, California beers like Ballast Point or um, you know Anchor, you don't get a whole lot over there in the Midwest because you'll have your uh, Michigan, Indiana's, um, Ohio's, and then um, for the East. So I haven't had this one before, um, but it's a good price. Um, you know, it's a it's a micro beer, and I really anytime you're gonna get a micro beer as a single for around two dollars, if not less, I think that's a Pretty good bargain. Um, so I'll recommend that for value for price. Now category four is drinkability. Um, you know how many of these could I you know, go in a row? It um, the alcohol content is about average. It's you know it's a 4.6 percent, so not too high. It might be um, a percentage point tick up from others, but it's not that high. And honestly. I'm kind of surprised since it is a little bit thicker. There is a bit more barleyness to it that the um, it's not higher. Um, I'm kind of not, you know just by going by the taste, I would have expected it to be in, in the fives at least, um, you know maybe five and a half. So I'm surprised that at that. And the uh, since it is a little thicker, you're not going to drink as many of them um, as you would maybe a, a thinner beer if that makes any sense. Um, so with a half of ice and with a wheat beer, you get your wheat beers in the summertime because you want something refreshing, you want something crisp, you want something maybe you could have just a whole pitcher of and you know, split with some friends, whatever. And you could do that with this, but it's not, um, I don't think so as much with, as with the other half of Bison's. Um, it's not bad, the drinkability is not terrible. I could have another one of these, but I think after two I'd want to switch it up, especially when it's hot out. So I'm gonna recommend, I'm gonna give this a half out of one for that fact that I feel like the lower alcohol content for how thick it is, is going against it. And so, yeah, I'll give it a half. Um, next category is distinction. And, um, you know, in the world, of wheat beers now, there's a lot of um, flavor adding going on where it's you know, more of like on the long lines of a shandy. There's a lot of wheat beers that are marketing, marketing themselves at wheat beers, but they're essentially shandies because they add the fruit flavor after the brewing process. Um, so there's a lot of um, you know tinkering going on with wheat beers, but that tinkering is pretty much just you know, let's add some juice in afterwards. Um, this one is really, it is a, a true Hefeweizen. It definitely has the more German taste than the, the Belgian wit. But there's really nothing that sets it apart from other German beers. It's not bad. It's, it's I think it's, it's, it's fine. It's done uh, decently well. But there's nothing, I wouldn't be able to taste this in a line of other uh, Hefeweizens and be like, yes, that one is Golden Road. Wouldn't have it. It would either be like nine out of ten of these taste exactly the same, or the, I mean, it just it wouldn't stand out. It, it's fine, but it doesn't stand out. So um, I will not be recommending it on distinction. Mm. Now, lastly, would I buy it again? Um, I think it depends on the setting. If it was on tap, and depending on what else was on tap, and it's the summertime, I would I, I'd get it. You know, I wouldn't. You know, if I was offered it, I wouldn't. You know, ugh, no. It's it's a fine beer. It's um it's not a bad half of ice, and that's I always find it disappointing when you have a bad one, a bad wheat beer. It's just like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> How did you mess this up? So it's not bad, um, but there are plenty of other half of other wheat beers, other you know along that line that I would 
go with above this beer. So um, would I buy it again? I'll give it a half out of one simply because I would, but there would be uh, many others ahead of it that I would go with. So yeah, uh, overall I'll give it a four out of six. No, not bad, not bad. Um, so I'd say give it a whirl, check it out if you're in uh, along the southwest or along the west coast, you'll run into this beer for sure. So I say recommend it if you get a chance, or I would say check it out if you get a chance. But um, yeah, that is my recommend, uh, that, that is my review on Golden Road's uh, Hefeweizen. And if you've had it before, let me know, write it in the comments, tell me you hate it, you love it, you know, whatever. And uh, if you like the video, please uh, like it, please subscribe, we got some uh, good stuff coming up, we got some other good videos uh, already up. But yeah, let me know. And um, you can please check out our podcast, The Two Dudes in a Six Pack. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. And yeah, that's about it. So for now, Grayson and for the other dude, Chris, take it easy.